Hey guys, what's going on? It's Majid here. I'm over in Kauai still. I'm on the last day of my vacation. Haven't been posting very much, but definitely been watching the market this week. And unfortunately, it has not been a pretty sight. Think train wreck in slow motion. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about that and how I'm adjusting and adapting to this market and um, give some thoughts on that. I also want to take a look at the performance for the last month of some of our quantum tickers. So some of the biggest quantum stocks out on the market. I also want to give a preview for the Qubits 2025 conference that I'll be attending. I'm going to go over the initial email that they sent out to conference attendees and talk about a little bit of the plan coverage. So I have a lot to cover in a short period of time. If you like content like this, please consider liking and subscribing. And I'm going to jump right in. Okay, guys. So... Unfortunately, we've had another rough, rough week in the market, and Friday was no exception. We saw the biggest tech companies dumping in price. Google, Meta, Amazon, all of these stocks took an insane hit today and through the week. If we want to look at the this from a chart perspective, tech especially has been hit really hard this week. So if we look at the five day, we started the queues were at 493 and we're down to 467. So if we just measure the move even this week where we had a solid start to the week, we're down 5% across techs in the queues. So there is a correlation between the QQQ and quantum as much as I would love to see them decoupled and do their own thing. Uh, quantum and tech run very closely together. So if tech isn't doing well, then quantum obviously doesn't tend to do that well. So let's take a look at the one month stock price change for QUBT, QBTS, Rigetti, IonQ, ARQQ, and LAES. So we have... Our winner is still QBTS with a 44% increase. If we're just looking at where prices were one month ago, we see also that ARQQ is up 33%. We see that QUBT has had a solid month at 28%. We see Rigetti at 5%. And then we see that LAES is down 5%. And IonQ is also down on the month. So these, these numbers also at stock analysis are one day old. So this chart looks less good uh, because we had more sell-off today in the market. So let's look at what that looked like from our quantum watch list. So we saw... ARQQ had the biggest sell-off today at 9.9%, followed by LAES, followed by QBTS, which is down at 750. Then we see Rigetti is holding this $8, barely holding this $8, and IonQ is still floating around this $22 range. First, we're looking at QBTS, and we see that over three months, we've had a wild ride, we see that just before the quantum crash, we were holding a $10 position. We see that for a very long time, we just consolidated and went sideways around $5 to $6. And then recently, on the research paper released and the announcements from D-Wave, we saw an explosion upward to touching $12. And now we've seen some steady sell-off as macro pressures have increased. The pressure, this can't be stated enough. So the pressures on quantum stocks, especially since quantum is a speculative tech play and it's an emerging tech play in a tech space, the pressure from the wider market, if they're selling pressure from the wider market, if you're seeing 5% sell off in the biggest tech companies in the world, then these stocks, these smaller cap quantum pure plays are definitely going to take a hit. It's just going to happen. Even if they um, have great news 
uh, people are going to go completely risked off in this type of environment. So we saw this huge volume on the announcement. We saw the stock halted for QBTS. And now we're kind of in this point where the stock is slowly giving back. So we're almost to, to the pre-explosion number in QBTS. And a lot of investors are looking at the Qubits 2025 conference and wondering if there's going to be any announcement. Um, so let's take a look since since I'll be attending um, this conference and hopefully bringing you back some some information for you all. So Qubits is less than two weeks away. We're thrilled that you're joining us. Is it the agenda? So they're going to talk about quantum optimization use cases, the growing trend of on-premise quantum infrastructure, D-Wave's advances in quantum computing, technology and science, growing exploration of quantum AI, and much more. So it looks like continental breakfast. I'll be there. <laughs> uh, Qubits will start at 8.30 and end at 5.30. Come hungry and ready to have fun. Say less. Tuesday, breakfast will be available at 7.45 and the conference will start at 8.30 and run till 4.45. There's a hands-on coding workshop. I won't probably be there because I don't know how to code. Um, and networking and entertainment. We strive to make Qubits a memorable experience for everyone. In addition to your overall knowledge, and D-Wave's remarkable technology developments, Qubits is an ex excellent opportunity to get to know others involved in this exciting space. So let's go take a look at the agenda. All right, so day one, right to kick things off, we have Dr. Alan Barat, CEO, and special guest Charles Payne, Fox Business, with the opening Quantum Realized Keynote, then the ULIC Supercomputing Center, Scaling for the Future, and there's going to be some speakers. Then we're going to have quantum optimization for mobile network performance, useful quantum computing and exploration of the state of the computing market, the quantum AI project, D-Wave Advantage Keynote, Realizing Advantage Systems, over Ocean and Hybrid Solvers, the Leap Quantum Cloud Service, Product and Technology Roadmap, we're going to see the quantum infrastructure panel, supercomputing center, quantum optimization, the killer use case for quantum computing, unstoppable, our leadership potential realized, Alden Mills, founder of 500 CEO, entrepreneur, best-selling offer, and Navy SEAL, quantum optimization, constrained quadratic model, and I'll be taking off probably about midday to catch a flight, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to catch some of the stuff in the afternoon, um, but I'm super excited for this conference, and um, I can't wait to pick up my badge and meet some folks out here. Uh, this is my first quantum computer conference. Um, it's a little bit outside of my comfort zone, I'm not going to lie. Um, but I'm very interested in quantum computers, and I hope just as someone that doesn't know much, um, that's not uh, a scientist or computer scientist that's working um, on the coding or the creation, just someone that's an interested investor, that, that I go there with that mindset of learning more about what these can do. Maybe I'll get a chance to talk to some of these people, maybe bring some content back for the channel. So I'm looking forward to that. Let's take a look at a few other charts and then call this a video. We're ripping through this because I'm going to get back to the beach, okay? Um, <laughs> this is the last day, so uh, as much as I love you guys, um, I'm in Hawaii, so i got to take advantage of that while I'm here. Um, so we are looking at five days of LAES SEALS Q, and we are, unfortunately, we saw some we saw a 320 price point and then macro pressures have pushed us down to this pretty significant $2.60 support level. So when I was entering the stock, I entered around 260. We can see that it's held about 260 for a long time. We haven't seen a dip below there. So that seems to be a major support for SEALs Q in the near futures. If it breaks below 260, that, that would be 
um, an indication of wider issues with the company or the market as a whole tanking even further. ARQQ. All right, so we saw a surge along with QBTS announcement in the NVIDIA G GTC panel, and we've given all of it back. If we're, I love to zoom out because you can just see it, see it in the charts. If we look at the five day, we're past that initial explosion in the gap up, and we're back down to we've really given back those gains, and and we're still in a good spot. We're just not. Uh, we're not at the level of volume anymore. And uh, if the macro pressures persist, this stock will probably continue to be cheaper and cheaper. All right. Rigetti had some interesting candles at the end of the trading day. A little bit of a, an explosion upward. Rigetti is always interesting to watch. I think it's the Tesla of uh, quantum computing stocks. It just moves in explosive ways. Let's take a look at five days. And we see that we just had steady sell off with the macro. Let's look at a month. We had a spike with D wave, GTC, and sell off. Let's look at three months. We're still not back to pre quantum crash price of that $20 level that Rigetti touched for a little while. And it's going to take more from Rigetti. Um, Rigetti's positioned themselves as. Um, in in as a research company um, that is in the process of building quantum computers, and I think they need to take a page out of the book of their competitors like IonQ and D-Wave, and really start to look at uses today. Um, and I think investors will love that if they get a little bit more aggressive with their marketing and their use cases today. All right, and IonQ. Ion Q, poor Ion Q has been just absolutely obliterated. So Ion Q was one of the stronger stocks and had more of the headlines supporting its price after the quantum crash. We see it held this $40 price point for a solid, let's see, from January 14th all the way until really, let's move me out of the way. I'm always in the way, gosh. Um, till February 14th, about a month of a solid $40 level. And then we just saw a crazy, just downward, 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 downward. Um, we've seen this little explosion back up to get above that key $25 level. And we're seeing more sell off with macro pressure. So now I've covered all the price action. Uh, covered qubits, and I want to just give some closing thoughts on what to do in a market like this. So this is my opinion, and this is an investing advice. Any of my any of my channels, uh, any of my content on my channel, for that matter, is an investing advice. It's I'm um, sharing information, and then you should make your own decisions after doing your own due diligence. That way, you will have a higher conviction in what you're doing and why you're doing it, which is the most powerful thing when it comes to investing. So when I look at my investments in quantum stocks, um, I've said this on the channel before, so it's not gonna be a surprise to any of you all, but I'm looking at the long term. I don't really care about three days, three weeks, three months. I'm looking at years. I'm looking at a timeline of a longer period. So I'm looking at these at this type of market as an opportunity to continue building positions and owning more of these companies at a discount. So when these breakthroughs happen and when the stocks move up, I can sell some bonus shares, take some profit, but have a solid foundation um, also in, in quantum. So so another thing that I think is really important is in this market with the unpredictability, the current tariff situation and trade wars and all these all this macro environment that's very uncertain and unstable. I think I've personally pulled back considerably on options. Uh, I know that there's opportunity out there, but if I'm buying an, an option, a call or a put, it's going to be with a longer time horizon. I think 
a week or two weeks or three week call op options in this market is gambling and burning money because we're in such a news driven market. And at any time, president of the United States can say something that contradicted what he said the previous day. And then the next day can contradict it again. And we can't predict what is going to happen. So in that case, my personal philosophy at this point in time is to build up a lot of shares and hunker down. Um, I know these stocks at some point will recover. I know the market will recover. I'm not too worried about that. The market is designed to go up over time. We are in a stormy period. And in order to weather the storm, the mindset has to shift. I know um, I came into the market during a full-on bull market where everything was going up all the time. Um, that's not the case right now. And that might not be the case for a while if we continue to see uh, the compression of the market like this. Now, I do know that the lower these stocks go, the more attractive they get. The valuations for companies like Google, NVIDIA um, are crazy, crazy low. And then even these quantum stocks that are speculative and trade at high multiples, as we see these breakthroughs in quantum technology and we see the quantum news headlines, there is a an irresistible nature to what this future of computing is going to look like. So I would, I guess as a closing, a closing thought is to think about Jeremy Lefebvre, I don't know how to say his name, uh, Jeremy, financial education on YouTube. He, he said something recently, which, which is similar to my mindset. But if you were forced to buy a stock and you couldn't trade it for three years, how would you make your portfolio? And that's kind of the the mindset of the long-term investor. Uh, if you're swing trading or if you are a day trader or a momentum trader, there's definitely opportunities in, in these. And, and you just kind of have to go with the greater macro and, and how the market is moving and the headlines that are coming. So we have the news, obviously, from the uh, from the top uh, from the administration and the world news and then all the way down to quantum as a sector and theme in the news that's happening there. So if you're trading these names on a shorter term basis, look for short term catalysts. Um, my personal hope for qubits next week is that they will have some exciting announcements. Um, I think D-Wave has been delivering over and over these past couple months, and I hope that there are some positive headlines or some announcement that we'll see at Qubits 2025. I know there's been a, a talk about potentially pursuing D-Wave pursuing a gate model quantum computer. So that could be really cool. Anyway, um, I hope you found this all useful. I'm blabbing at this point, so I'm going to sign off. Um, hope you all have a good day and good luck. Out. Have a great weekend. Don't worry about this week. Um, we'll see what happens next week. I can't say it's going to get much better, but the mindset um, should be how many companies can you own at this discounted price? That's my mindset. All right. See y'all later.